Hey Tigers, how's everybody doing? Mr. Stedman here. I'm uh, going to talk to you today about uh, some of the things you might run into in the uh, Premier Pro Certification Test that you guys have so uh, agreed to take, uh, which I greatly appreciate, uh, and it's good for you as well. So it's good to kind of take it in this environment and just kind of see what happens. Um, I miss you guys a lot. Uh, I really missed uh, finishing up the year with you guys, uh, but thank you for a great year and uh, really welcoming me and uh, bringing me into the fold there at Palmetto High School. So uh, I really do appreciate it. And uh, let's try to end the year strong and get a lot of you guys certified. Wanted to talk about some of the basics of Premier Pro. One of the things uh, you have to know is time code, okay? So remember that time code is hours, minutes, seconds, and frames, okay? So as the slides, okay? This particular effect is 60 frames. So once it gets to 60, it switches over to one second. OK, so you may run into some questions where that's important or you may get a multiple choice question that asks you what is time code. OK, but it's the first number here. It goes left to right hours, minutes, seconds and frames. One of the other things I've seen, too, is you get a question where they have you change the endpoint by actually typing in the time code. So if you notice right here. There's time code in there, so they might have you change this, okay? Maybe a random clip, and they may just have you change that from two seconds to one second, okay? So you would just change that manually on your own. So you may get a question like that. So you may have to expand one of these panels in order to find it, okay? But as long as you know what time code is and that it's hours, minutes, seconds, and frames, I think you can handle whatever question they happen to throw your way uh, in regard to time code. A few of the other things that may come your way in the multiple choice, don't forget, is stuff we covered early in class. Some of those terminology, your shot selections, you know, close-ups, long shots, medium shots, make sure you understand the framing of those. Some of those industry terms that we talked about during the Batman Superman lesson. Remember we talked about log line, which is a one sentence summary of a film. Uh, your dailies, which is what they review. That's the uh, video footage or the film that is shot during that day. They go back and take a look at the dailies that were shot that day and kind of make some decisions on what they want to keep. They might ask you some questions about your audience or demographics and things like that. So a lot of that you'll run into in Quizlet if you take a peek at that review. But bear in mind, those are some of the uh, kind of multiple choice or fill in the blank questions you might encounter on the certification test. Just wanted to recap a couple of things. First of all, make sure you know your panels, okay? So make sure you know this is the source panel. They should be labeled, but make sure you know where they are and what they do, your project panel, your program panel, the sequence or the timeline down here. The sequence is actually your project, the timeline panel. They're kind of one and the same. You got the tool panel over here. And then depending on what the setup is, you have your effects, uh, you've got title things and stuff like that. So some of the things you may see on the test, let's start with some basics, okay? Um, the idea of switching between an icon view and a list view, okay? That's right down here at the bottom. I hope you can see this happening. So that list view will list all the items that's in there. The icon view shows you the pictures. In that list view, one of the things you might see is a question that has you create a new sequence from the project panel, and that's real simple. So if you have a video clip of something, you know, in here, so let's just say we've got um, this little money drop, I would right click on that and then choose new sequence from clip. That's it. And as you can see, it creates a brand new sequence and it drops that clip in there. OK, so you might put a question that says create a new sequence using the money clip or whatever the clip is. That's how you would do that. OK. Um, your little arrow here will expand other things in the window so you can see you know, some things. So if I bring up the effects tab, they may ask you things about the transitions, okay? So if you right click on any of these transitions, so if they ask you to set something as a default transition. So the default transition means all your transitions that get inserted in between your edits or your video clips will be the same, okay? So they might say, set the cross dissolve as the default transition. So all you gotta do is find your effects uh, tab or panel, find what transition they're looking for. Uh, let's say it's the cross dissolve, right click on that little box and then choose set as the default. It's that easy, 
Okay, these are some things I've seen in the past, all right? Um, trying to think of a few other things here. Um, you may get some interactive questions, obviously, with the buttons. Now, when you hover over these buttons at home or at school, you'll see they tell you what they are, okay? Make sure you know what they are because that will no longer be there on the test. Good news is you can reason through some of this stuff, okay? So if you take a peek at the insert button, okay, what the insert button does, if you get a good peek at that, is it's going to insert a clip down in, so from here, okay, to insert a clip from the source panel, and it'll insert it wherever your playhead is, okay? So let's just say we wanted to insert, uh, let's find something here, uh, this delicate, okay, little wave, and say we want to insert it right there, okay? And say we also want to move that clip over, all right? So if you notice, the pictures and the arrows will tell you what it does. So an insert inserts the clip and it pushes the media to the right so it goes in there. Okay, so I've got this chosen and I don't have any, you know, of course you could earmark a little piece of this if you wanted to with your in and out points and then use the insert button. Okay, these are all called buttons and it'll pop that in there. So if you notice, it put it right where the playhead was, it put the little section that I chose and then it pushed the media to the right. Okay, I'm gonna undo that. Your item here, the overwrite, okay? Notice the picture, notice the arrow. It's an arrow placing down, but notice there's an underline underneath that arrow. Okay, there's no pushing, there's no splitting, nothing like that. So that means it's going to overwrite the clip in the timeline. So let me click this so you see what's going on. Okay, so it didn't push anything over, but from the spot of the playhead, it overwrote the rest of that money clip with that little delicate current clip, okay? Um, if you need to make a freeze frame, we did that in the skating video, you might remember. That's uh, the, not the freeze frame, but the export, uh, yeah, that'll export a frame, okay? Wherever that's at, so if we wanted to export that, we can click that, and then you get your choices here, what to title it, what format it needs to be. So you might get a question that does that. It might say, hey, export a still frame, save it in a certain format, title it something, pay attention where you're saving it to. The browse is always gonna let you choose something where to save things to. Uh, you can import it into the actual project by clicking that and then you can hit okay, all right? So that's how you can do freeze frame. So there's a couple other buttons here too. You've got the lift button and that will lift a clip. If you notice, it'll lift a clip out. Okay, let me put another clip in here. So let's say we want to lift a section out of our project. All right, so I'm going to set in and out points. I'm using my I and my N and my O, okay? Or you can use the in and out points right here because the program panel is your timeline panel, okay? So it might tell you to lift out a section of a project. So make sure you set your in and out points, find that lift button. Notice it's got the lift arrow going up so it's gonna pull it out of there, okay? So there's another button called the extract button. Okay, and this little plus thing will let you add buttons. So this right here is the extract button. And let's say I want to now extract that clip and then put the clips on the left and the right side and smoosh those together because this is the clip I've decided, you know what, I just wanna get rid of this and I wanna put the, uh, the clips together. So there's a one called an extract. Again, pay attention to the arrows. So an extract means, think about like pulling a tooth. You're gonna pull that clip out, but then the arrows here on the left and the right, that means it's gonna push your media together. So simply select what you're going to, you know, pull out of here. And then here's my extract. It's gonna pull it out and it's gonna smash that together. And I didn't get a nice tight edit there, but that's how that works, okay? So a couple of these reviews, you got your insert, you got your overwrite, you got your lift, you have your extract, and you have your export frame. Those are some of the more popular buttons that you might see asked as questions. Uh, remember, of course, we've covered what is the drag video only, that's a little film strip. If we're talking about audio, there is the little waveform there, so that's gonna drag audio only down, so keep that in mind. One of the other things, I know some people have asked me before is, 
how do I add extra layers? You notice right now there's only three layers right there. And say you're doing a project where you got a bunch of stuff stacked up. If you need to add another track, okay, or a layer to your project, it's real simple. Make sure you're clicked in the sequence or the timeline. Come up here to sequence because you want to add it to your sequence. Come up here, down here at the bottom, it says add tracks. Okay, you notice you can delete tracks the same way. But if it says add, you know, two tracks of audio or add one track of video to your project. So just click in here, go to sequence, add tracks. And then right over here, you can pick and choose how many you want to add and where you want to add them. Okay, because the question might be specific. It might say add one track of video, you know, after video line one or, you know, after video line three or before the first track. So just pay attention to that, okay? Or it may ask you something in here with the audio. It may even ask you to add a mono track or a 5.1 um, high def audio track. So just follow the question. The biggest thing with a lot of this stuff is you just have to know where to find things. If you know where to find something, then the question almost walks you through it, okay? But that's how you add tracks. Um, don't forget about adding text. If you go to File, New, you've got your legacy title. OK, um, it might have you add a new thing of text. I'm just going to call that text. And one of the things once you get into this text over here is remember, if you need to clone a thing of text, you hit this little kind of like film strip icon with a T in it. OK. You also have this little box right below here. If you click this, it might say create a uh, still thing of text so that, you know, the default is still. If you wanted to roll where we did that little thing with your credits at the end of the studio assignment. You have your crawl left and crawl right. And then of course, if you wanted to start off screen and end off screen like movie credits, you can check those boxes. But that's where that is right here, this little box right here, okay? There's no title for what that is, but it's typically found right below that little clone button, okay? Uh, don't forget about your tools, the title tools, the arrow, you can move stuff around, the T you can type, uh, you can draw some shapes. You can type, you know, vertically. Your styles you can change. You probably shouldn't see that. Uh, the properties are in here, okay, to do backgrounds and shadows and your fonts. You shouldn't get too much of that. They're going to stay pretty basic, but just to show you where these things are, okay. Um, one of the other things that we didn't get a chance to take a peek at is an effect called a uh, warp stabilizer, okay. So it is a video effect. You can look it up here, okay? The warp stabilizer, okay? So it's under distort. Now, um, I can't remember if the newer version of the test lets you type things in there. I think they want you to know where things are. But if they ask you to use an effect that kind of stabilizes your shot, something that's a little bit shaky, like say you did an interview and you didn't have a tripod and you held it pretty steady, but it's got just a little bit of shake to it. You would then take this warp stabilizer drag and drop it onto that clip, and then you would render it, okay? And then it'll take out that shake. But I think they're only gonna have you drag and drop it on there. They want you to know what that effect is, okay? We didn't get a chance to get into that because we didn't get to do our interview project and, and a few other things, but it's called a warp stabilizer. So I know you haven't seen that before, but that's what that is uh, called and that's what it does. It, it reduces the amount of shake um, that is in a particular clip you might have. And then of course you may get a few things with some of these edit tools. Uh, your most recent lesson worksheets um, reviewed these uh, with your razor tool and your slip tool and the pen tool. Now remember that pen tool does stuff with your audio, okay? So if you drag some audio over here, all right, make sure you expand that so you can see that rubber band, all right? Um, you've got your mute control here. You can do things over here. You can lock things. You can, your eyeball lets you uh, mute uh, clips so you can't see it. So if that eyeball you, you gets rid of the clip. So there's a few things here um, you got to be aware of. But you won't be able to adjust that audio level, that up and down audio level, unless you drag that track. Okay, so expand that track right there so you can see it. And remember, you can use that pen tool to make little divots and dips in your audio. Okay, so you can do that. Let's talk real quick about exporting a project. So if they have you export something, okay, remember you have to select this because this is where your final project is at. So once you click this, make this the active frame, you go to file, you go to export, 
and then typically you select media. I have seen where they have you export as a Final Cut Pro project. That uh, program doesn't exist anymore, so I doubt you're gonna get that question, but just in the event thereof, that's how you would get to that, and then just follow what the question has you do. But if you're gonna export something, you go to you know, select this, file, export, and then media, and then follow the question, okay? Because they will tell you what format it needs to be. Even if you don't understand what the format is, just click it. If they tell you that it has to be, you know, in uh, PNG or Targa or TIFF, you're like, what is that? Who cares? Just click it so it's in that format. They'll tell you the preset, what it needs to be. And then they might also tell you export audio or video only, okay? So if you're uh, that far along, they might say, hey, export audio only. So if that's the case, make sure you uncheck that box. That way it's only going to uh, export the audio or vice versa. If they want just video only, make sure you uncheck that. And there's just a few things in here in case they, if you scroll through here, they might have you modify something. All right. So just be aware of that. And here is your range where you can change things if they need, if they have you do anything this way. They might have you modify the source range. So just click on that, export the work area or your in and out points or anything like that. So Again, as long as you know where something is, you, the question will help you kind of walk your way through it, okay? And then once you've chosen everything, and if you need to change the name of it, remember to click on the blue link, okay? And then you can specify where, what folder it's gonna go to, whether it's the desktop or a folder or wherever it happens to be. And then once you do that, just click export and away you go, okay? So exporting project is something you may see. Um, and if you need to do anything else with a clip, remember right click does all these different things. Remember we talked about speed and duration. We did uh, scale to frame size in, in class with some things. But if you need to modify something, okay, you can right click and just kind of follow that question. Same thing over here. You right click on a clip and you can do things. It has all, that's what's gonna bring your menu up is that right click on something. Okay, so just remember the right click and follow the question and you should be able to get where it is because that's what this test is really asking you and that's what it's all about. It's about seeing if you know the general layout of this program and you know where to find things. Okay, this is not a master certification. This is an Adobe Certified Associate Certification Test. So they want to try to establish a baseline that you know the basic operations of the program. Remember, it's only 31 questions, guys. It's only 31 questions, and you do get uh, 52 minutes, I believe it is, to uh, work this out. Uh, you're signing in through Certiport, and uh, Rui's going to be a proctor. I've never done this before, so I don't know entirely what to expect. So obviously, I'm kind of forging new ground here. Um, but again, I, I handpicked about uh, 20 of you on two different days to test. And uh, because I think you can reason your way through this and uh, possibly pass this. Worst case scenario, um, for those of you that are coming back, uh, you've seen the test and therefore you'll take the same test next year and have a chance to pass it, which is good. Now, if you get really close, the good news is they've suspended the 30 day gap that has to exist. So you can actually take it again um, from I think through the end of June, if I'm not mistaken. So if you get really close and you're like, hey, Mr. S, I was so close. I only missed it by X amount of points. I think I can do it. I want to try it again. So we can do that again because you've still got those three attempts for this school year. So do keep that in mind when you're reviewing and after you process uh, what happens during this certification process. So I wish you guys the best of luck. Take a peek at this video. Reach out to me uh, if need be. Uh, via Schoology or email or whatever, and we can work through this, um, and we'll go from there. So best of luck, guys. I know you can do this, uh, and you'll make your best effort moving forward. Go Tigers.